What's up everyone? Nick from Resonix Sound Solutions here with another tech tip on the Helix DSP uh, software. This time we are going to be going over the input priority and signal management tab in the DCM menu. This is where we set up all of our inputs for automatic switching or which ones have priority or how we want to bring them into the, you know, into the system. Um, you know, you do this after you set up all of your inputs right in here, but in this menu, you know, this is how you get there. You know, this is your main screen. We're going to click DCM and then right up here, we have signal management. Um, again, this is where we have all of our settings for switching and you know, how they come into the, into play here. Um, so let's get into it right down here. Bottom left, we have our main input. This is going to affect our main to virtual routing. Um, so anything that, that can be anything from, you know, analog input, auxiliary input or digital input, but it's still going to refer to the main window. It's not exactly the analog inputs. It's the main. You could have the analog inputs, but it could also be auxiliary. It could be digital. It could be a combination of all three if you wanted to. Um, but that is what main input is going to do. Now, how we affect it. This is the DSP Ultra S uh, in demo mode that I am working on. In some other processors or the DSP amps, there are more features here for gain setting and stuff. But for the Ultra S, it is just the priority switching. So you can have it enabled or disabled. Stock is disabled. Um, enabled means that if your main input sees any signal, it is automatically going to switch to your main input. Even if you're using an auxiliary input or digital input, like let's say you're, you have a digital input enabled and you're using your digital audio player to stream uh, music into your processor via the coaxial input. Um, but the second you get a navigation prompt or Bluetooth calls uh, or something of that sort on your main input, uh, it's gonna switch over to that main input. This is a nice feature for many different reasons. Um, again, like if you're using a digital audio player or, or something of that sort, but you navigate on your car's OEM radio, uh, you can set it to do navigation and still give you those directions without you know, having to miss the, the voice commands of that navigation. How you do that is again, enable it. And then we have two other settings here. We have sensitivity and we have release. Sensitivity refers to the input signal coming into that input. Um, how hot does that signal need to be in order for it to detect it? Default setting is minus 60 dB. Um, very rarely do I find the need to change it from there, but there are situations. Uh, I actually just ran into one the other day where I was doing a customer's uh, Mazda CX-30 where he uses a digital audio player as his main source, not the main input, but like he uses it on the digital input, but he uses it as like his primary source. Uh, that's where he listens to all, his, all of his music from. But he still wants to navigate home because he was driving from New York to Wisconsin. And he mentioned like, yeah, um, you know, I still want to be able to navigate and have the voice commands come through. And how we did that, we, you know, we enabled it and I set it to a low release time, meaning if the signal is coming in at minus, six, minus 60 dB for one second, it'll switch over. If I switch it over to you know, five seconds, it means we'll have to have minus 60 dB for five seconds in order for it to switch over. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty, uh, actually I, th think I, I think I have that wrong. Um, uh, give me one second to remember correctly. Release. Release might be, uh, why am I drawing a blank on this? Release might be how long, um, how long this input is willing to let go. So if we have the digital input playing and we set it to one second release, uh, I think if it sees minus 60 dB for one second, the digital input will release, but I'm not, mm, I think it's the other way around. I think, I think the name is just confusing. Um, sorry for, for not knowing off the top of my head. I, I do not remember because again, it's rare that I need to really adjust these. So play around with this, 
but I think it has to do with if it sees minus 60 dB for whatever amount of time you set it for, it'll switch over. Um, but in, in this Mazda CX-30, we ran into a situation where the factory amplifier puts out a fake exhaust noise uh, on, on that signal in order to make the, the people with those cars think their car sounds cooler than it really does. Stupid feature, but a lot of cars are doing this now. And when we drove the car, we realized, oh, why is the, why is the digital input cutting out? And we realized the main input was taking over because it was seeing signals. So we actually ended up having to raise it to about minus 40 dB. Uh, so it would have to see minus 40 dB of signal. That's a hotter signal than minus 60 um, in order to switch over effectively. So it kept the uh, fake exhaust noise out and kept it out of the picture and prevented it from causing it to switch over, but was still good enough for the navigation prompts uh, to to see this and, and switch over for that. Um, now getting into the other settings, you know, we have auxiliary up here on the left, and then we have digital down here on the right. You can have all three inputs and you can have them all work as one on the same tune without even having to switch any inputs manually. Let's say, you know, let's take that Mazda CX-30 for example. He has the digital input via the uh, digital audio player and before we modified the setup, he also had a Bluetooth HEC card. Um, if we wanted to set them up, we would set, uh, let's start with the HEC card. We have two options here. You can set up the HEC card as the input for the auxiliary source, or you can do RCA in on inputs G and H on this processor as the auxiliary source. Every processor allows this from Helix, but it depends on which model it is for what inputs it's going to be to be those sources. Um, let's say we're just using the heck input module as the source. So we would select that. Now we have to come down to, okay, do we want the auxiliary input to be activated automatically via its own signal detection, or do we wanna manually switch it via the conductor or the director, which we went over in the last video. I don't see any reason why you would wanna switch it manually, so, I, I click automatic. Um, now the other thing we have here is priority. Does the heck card have priority or does the digital input have priority? Um, it depends on what you prefer. If you want your, well, uh, let me explain what this does first before we even get into that. This means that if the heck input and the digital input are playing at the same exact time, uh, it determines which input is going to be active. So if you're streaming Bluetooth from your phone uh, to the processor and you're also streaming digital input from your digital audio player to your processor, um, with how we have it set now with digital input as priority, that means the digital audio player will be playing. That digital input will have the priority. But if we switched it to the heck card having priority, that means the heck card would take over before the digital input. If we have it set like this and we want to play our digital input, we can still leave it as such. Again, we can set it to automatically via signal detection on the coaxial or optical input. Um, but what we would have to do is we would just have to pause any sound coming from our phone. And it sees no signal, so it'll switch then to the digital input. Um, when we have global priority enabled, this is pretty much you know, priority over these two signals. If you don't want this to have priority over these two signals, you would have to disable this. That makes things a little bit trickier though if you're trying to use your factory head unit for any navigation and stuff like that. Um, one thing to note is you cannot automatically switch between coaxial or optical inputs. You have to do this with your controller or you have to do this with a different tune. So like tune one, you can have optical input. Tune two, it could be the same exact thing otherwise, but tune two, you could have coaxial input. Or again, like our last video, we can have the conductor uh, on where we can have the signal input selection menu selected. 
where we can change the coaxial to uh, optical or vice versa. Um, but yeah, pretty straightforward. It's really, really helpful. It's, it's simple enough once you grasp it, uh, but it's a very nice tool to have. And I've never come across a situation where I wasn't able to do exactly what I wanted to. So yeah, that pretty much covers it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below or email us or call us or anything. If you have any suggestions, again, feel free to comment below or email us or call us or text us or whatever. Uh, and subscribe, stay tuned. I plan on having way more of these videos. And uh, yeah, and now you can also purchase all Helix and all other AudioTech Fisher products directly through Resonix as we are now the authorized internet dealer for all AudioTech Fisher products in the United States. Uh, we are the only authorized internet dealer for them in the United States. And if you do not have a local dealer, feel free to reach out and we can get you situated. Even if you do have a local dealer and you're, you're not really sure, or you're not sure you have a local dealer, reach out and I can point you in the right direction to who would be a reliable local dealer in your area. Uh, and again, subscribe, stay tuned for more and have a good one. Thank you.